This is lecture 24 of ECE 2305. And so in today's lecture, we're going to be looking at uh, pipeline protocols. So we looked at ARQ uh, a little bit in the last lecture, in lecture 23. Automatic repeat requests. If information does not make it across, what do we do? Do we just say, oh, forget about it, and just uh, you know, let it be, and we'll try and figure out afterwards? Or does receiver talk back to transmitter and say, hey, can, can, can you repeat that? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at two popular forms of automatic repeat requests in something called a pipeline architecture. And there'll be a little bit of drawing. That's why I brought my notes, because I just want to make sure that I don't mess up, which I know I do when I'm very excited. So, so what is this pipeline concept? So what happens is the transmitter, oh, let, me, let me draw it. See, I, I have this itch for drawing. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the following diagram. So we're going to have sender, okay, that's our transmitter, and we're going to have receiver. So the way the pipeline architecture works is as follows. So let's say I have packet 1. And so what this looks like, essentially, so this is your transmitter side, okay, TX. That's your receiver or your destination, right? And the vertical going downwards is uh, sort of your evolution in time. So the further down you go... Um, both on send and receiver, we're progressing through time. So in this case, what happens is packet 1 gets sent at this time instance, and then it appears, like, you know, when this arrow goes down a little bit lower on the receiver bar, it indicates that some time has elapsed. I'm going to draw a little dash line. Between the transmission of packet 1 and its reception at the receiver. Okay. Now, at the same time, what may happen is packet 2 is fired away. Pew! Right? And it gets received by the receiver. Packet 3. Packet 4. And so on. So what the pipeline architecture does is boom, 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 boom. It keeps on firing a packet every time at the receiver. And then, depending on what sort of architecture you may have, your receiver will say, act that. <laughs> Almost sounds like Aflac. So what happens is, zip, it acts it, right? So th let's say that's an act. It basically says, act one, act two, act three, and ACK4, and so on and so forth. So what happens is, as it's coming along, in this architecture, a pipeline architecture, right, we basically are firing packet after packet, and then the receiver all does is, OK, got it, OK, got it. I didn't bring that beach ball, did I? <sighs> because we could try it in that way as well. Like, what we could do, yeah, maybe next year, I don't know. Or maybe next class, maybe part of the quiz. OK, what we do is we have two lines, so 86 people. What's 86 divided by 3? 43. So this would be perfect. It's like boop, boop, and bounce back. Nah, that's a recipe for disaster. I could, I could see that. We can play dog. Hmm? I was thinking about that. It has to be something soft because some of us are all thumbs, but, but a football, unless it's like about 100 yards apart, oh, the long bomb. What? No. It's got to be a beach ball. It's got to be a beach ball. <laughs> I'm so tempted. No, 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 no. No, no, I, I, I promise at some point between now and the end of class, we will have a beach ball going through class. Um, I'm really thinking near the end. I'm, it's tempting, but I would not do it during the quiz. That would be a bad idea. Like, you know, everyone's like, what? you know, so no, no, no. But, hmm, so many ideas, so little time. Okay, okay, beach ball. Remember, Walmart. Okay, so.
<laughs> so what happens is this is pretty much like if you line up, like maybe there's not four, uh, 86 people here, well, maybe a third or so. But what happens is, let's say, it, all this really is is that the sender sends information, a packet, and the receiver's like, okay, I got that packet. And then it's really a back and forth. But, but really what happens is the sender is not waiting for the act. It's sending the next data, and the next data, and the next data, and the next data. Now, here's the problem, other than me having butterfingers. Where is it? Is this. What happens if packet 3 didn't make it? Right? What happens if packet 3 gets this far, and then, you know, what, what did we talk about last class? We talk about packet corruption. We talk about packet, packet drop, right? Um, packet reordering. Okay. So this is from lecture 23, and we saw that. And so what happens is this is the case of what ends up happening is we send packet after packet over to the receiver, and then this guy does not make it. So what do we do? What does the receiver do in order to say to the sender, hey, I didn't get this information? And the answer is there's two. There's going to be the go back in protocol. And there's going to be the, uh, what is it called again? Selective repeat. I always forget the second one, because go back in is very popular. Um, so what happens is there are these two protocols, and both of them have their quirks, okay? So go back in, um, essentially what it does is it sends the ACK, 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 ACK. When it does not receive an ACK that corresponds to, like let's say it gets an ACK for one, two, four, hey, where's ACK three? Doesn't get ACK three? It says, okay, resend. Everything's starting at um, packet three all over again. So what, what yes? So does it resend packet four as well, or? It resends everything. No, it, everything so, from that point forward. Okay. So, so, so on the bad side, so that's a great observation. On the, on the bad side, what that means is, oh my god, I've got to retransmit everything. The good news is that we do not need a buffer on the receiver, right? It's, so, so like, you know, even though nowadays memory is cheap, you know, we could store all this and just retransmit. And that's actually what um, the other guy, Selective Repeat, does. It actually buffers everything it did receive, and it's like do 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 and gets back, and then it reorders everything, right? Um, of course, that information has to be, you have to wait for it. But on the other hand, if let's say you want a really cheap and simple low memory device, perhaps that, to go back in might be the way to go. So that's really the difference between the two. So that's actually a great, Great question. Uh, in fact, um, let's, let's go through the slides, but essentially I'm going to draw exactly that in action. All right. So what happens is, you know, pipelining. So pipelining is different compared to, let's say, pipelining in computer architecture, right? When you send in multiple commands in the process at different stages within your computer architecture. In this case, pipelining is I'm just sending all this information one after another, after another, after another. If I lose a few, then I've got to sort of, okay, got to retransmit. And how go back in and selective repeat handles it, they do it differently in terms of lost data. All right. Okie dokie. So, uh, so go back in. So there's essentially these cumulative acts. And what ends up happening is, and we'll see this, um, is that um, you'll get an act that corresponds to every packet that's, uh, uh, that's received, and it sticks on the last one. So let's say the next data that is received. If it's not corresponding to the next packet that we're supposed to receive, so let's say packet three is lost, it's going to get an act from two all the way through until the sender, the transmitter, says, oh, I think I've lost information, and then re retransmits from that point onwards, from packet three back all the way through. And it's kind of wasteful. Um, so, so you have that, and unfortunately, you retransmit all the unact packets. So what you end up having is something, remember this SN? So SN is the sequence number. 
So we have to keep the sequence number in, in close, uh, you know, in sort of, uh, we have to observe it at the receiver and the transmitter because this is going to tell us if something's lost along the way. And this is the other thing. Remember yesterday we talked about uh, reliable data transfer version 3 and the idea of timer and timeout. This is also quite, cr quite critical because the receiver, you know, when we do this sort of packet transmit, packet transmit, packet transmit in this pipeline, it'll take a while. So first of all, we're going to get bombarded. Our sender is going to get bombarded by all these ACK1s, right, because it didn't get packet 2. And then it waits a while. It's not getting the clue until, you know what? I didn't actually get packet 2 across and an ACK back. I think I need to retransmit. So there's actually a timer that sort of keeps track of this. <coughs> so, so as a result, there's both timing and there's all these cumulative acts that are kicking in in order to help us keep track of all that information going across from transmitter to receiver. All right? So, let, so and then the receiver, of course, there's that sequence number. But look, the easiest way to do this is to actually draw it. That and I want an excuse to draw. Ah, not alt, it's control. Okay, so this is how go back in works. So go back in. Okay. Happy face. So. And then receiver. And so what ends up happening is the sender, what it does is it says send packet one, send packet two, send packet three, and send packet four. So what ends up happening is, remember, time goes, progresses downwards, right? So receiver gets this, receiver gets this. Oh, somewhere along the way, zap. Packet 3 does not make it cross, but receiver gets packet 4. What ends up happening is we receive packet 1, and we send ac 1. We then receive packet 2, and we send ac 1. Two. Here, there's this big empty void, which our receiver doesn't know what's happening, right? So, and the receiver is not going to ask because all it knows is did I receive or did not receive information. Then all of a sudden, we receive packet four. So the sequence number is not making sense anymore, and it says, okay, I do not have the subsequent um, ACK here, so what I'm going to do is I discard, see? so. What, and the reason why we discard, again, <coughs> I'm just going to move here. I'm going to put a star, star. The reason why we discard receiver, I wish I knew how to spell. Receiver has no buffer, right? So as a result, what ends up happening is once I notice that the sequence number is out of sequence, I said, OK, I'm going to throw away all data until I get packet two, um, no, sorry, packet three again. And I'm going to continue sending act two, act two, act two, act two, until the sender says, oh, OK, I need to send packet three. All right. So what's going to happen is I discard, and then I say, send act two. So what happens is here's an act two. Here's, here's an act two. And what I'm going to do is, so it's going to do this. Here's my ACK2. Sorry, that's ACK1. So that's receive ACK1. Receive ACK2. Oh, well, there's nothing received there. And then all of a sudden, oh, the receiver is receiving ACK2 again. OK, that's interesting. So and then what ends up happening is, we have that, and then at this end, now we're sending right after this, like suppose we send packet four, uh, sorry, packet five, 
send packet 6. What do you think will happen? So let's say I send packet 5 and packet 6. Same issue. I receive packet 5 and I receive packet 6, but discard because I don't have a buffer and it's not in the right sequence, right? And then I send ACK2 again. And I send ACK2 again. So what ends up happening until, until, until receiver gets packet 2, uh, sorry, packet 3, it's basically going to say, I'm sending ACK2s until the, the, until, the until the sender gets me the right packet that I need to get in order. And so what's going to happen is, at the, at the sender, first of all, there's going to be a packet to timeout. Okay, that's really important. And then, now it gets the hint and says, send <coughs> packet two. Uh, sorry, shoot. Packet three, and then send packet three again. And this time it successfully makes it across. I receive packet three, and then send act three. And now, Everything else should be moving along just fine. Okay, so let's let's recap. So what's happening? I'm going to use a different color. So keep. So what do we have? So what we have okay, is packet one is successfully sent, packet two is successfully sent, and then we send the corresponding acts back to the sender to say, yeah, 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 this is all good. Send me more. Um, but what happens is packet 3 experiences some sort of error and never makes it to the receiver. And the receiver doesn't know anything. It just seems to be a gap, which is fine. Networks have that. And then packet 4 gets sent, and its sequence number, remember, SN, doesn't make sense anymore. Yep. So nothing, I'm sorry, so the receiver only sends um, an acknowledgement in response to what it's received. It doesn't send one with a blank space. Oh, yeah, exactly. No, th th so what ends up happening is it doesn't know it's receiving anything or not receiving anything. So because this is working kind of asynchronously, so it gets a packet, gets a packet. Time it, it's, okay. it's like, uh, it's almost like, oh, here's some more data. Oh, here's some more data. But it doesn't, it's not, it's not aware that something should be sent there. Exactly. So, so as a result, what happens is that the next guy in the, in the SN does not make sense. It says, Oh, well, I didn't get packet three. And so what it's going to do is it's going to scream out act two. And, and the same thing here with packet uh, five and packet six. It's going to say act two, act two. Yep. And when it, in the packets, does it say um, what number it is of the total? You know, like, is it packet one of six, packet, you know, like, my question is mm -hmm. basically if it does, if they, went through and, and the receiver just didn't get packet six, yep. but no, there was no packet seven sent, would it, how would it know? Yeah, well, it, it, so, so that's a great question. I think what happens here is all, all it has is just like, um, you know, so the sequence number doesn't say out of the total number of packets, right? So, so, and what happens is there's just some sort of counter that's keeping tabs on what number it's at now in terms of that SN. And so if it notices a jump, <coughs> It, it's it's a no go, but yeah, like uh, well, I'm saying, what if the last packet is the one that, that failed? Nah, there must be a workaround for that. Like you're you're absolutely right. I um, that actually is a great yes. You have an answer for that. There you go. Ah. Yep. Uh, uh, there, there, there's probably something that says at the end, like, you know, end of file or, or something to signify the end of the transmission. So that's a great point. Thank you. Okay. So, so, assume, so, so let's say that's taken care of over here. And then everything else in terms of, like, go back in, um, essentially it's, it's, it's in that state until such time that, um, you know, there's that timeout. The sender knows that something's wrong. It resends the missing packet, and then away we go. Yes? So, like, say they had, like, a packet timeout at, like, uh, way later. Way later. Uh, but those other times, like, all, like, the receiving packets before that get discarded 
Wouldn't you lose information from that too? Oh, yeah. Like what would happen is essentially all of that's lost. And that's why go back in. The problem is, um, you know, on the one hand, there's no memory at the receiver to, uh, for buffering. But on the other hand, you lose all of that and you're going to have to retransmit. And the problem with that is um, loss of throughput. Because uh, remember I talked about that concept called good put, where it's sort of the overall data that actually makes it across and gets translated. Well, what happens is when you have something like this, this is not good put. Like if you've got to retransmit, what you're essentially doing is you're wasting resources when you could be sending a lot of data at a much faster rate. So absolutely. Yeah, so, so in fact, that, that's a great segue into the other guy. Then there's the other guy. And that other guy is the selective repeat. Okay. So selective repeat. Repeat, ARQ. Okay. So, so first of all, um, what is its difference with respect to, so differs from, what is it called? Go back in. Um, there is a buffer. At receiver. And what happens is, what that does is it holds on. Holds on to, um, ho holds on to um, received <coughs> packets until missing is retransmitted. So in that case, what happens is that, that's, a, um, that, that's exactly the case. What happens is you have a little bit more efficiency in terms of getting data across. And as a result, you don't have to worry about like resending everything when most of it got successfully intercepted. So the way that would work is you have sender, you have receiver. And again, remember, this is time. And so you send packet one, send packet two, send packet three, send packet four. So if, if you send, and again, let's say we get that same issue. Let's, let's draw it in red. And you don't get packet three. Let's say we, ha we send a batch more, five, packet six. And then we start, we, we also send X. Ah. Okay, so these are the X. What happens is, notice in this case, so first of all, so uh, we receive, packet one, right? We receive packet two. <coughs> Here again, we, we don't know. Like so, you know, the receiver doesn't know if we actually picked up anything. Then we receive packet four. So what we do is instead of discard like what we did with go back in, instead we buffer. Okay? We receive packet five, we buffer that as well. And at the same time, we send back the acknowledgement of two, 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 right? So we buffered that as well. So what ends up happening is we receive, at this end, um, ac one, receive ac two, we receive, oh, holy smokes, ac two, ac two, ac two. So as a result, what we, we've got is now um, there's also that timeout, just as before. So timeout for packet two. Ah, uh, sorry, packet three. I'm sorry. I don't know what planet I'm on. And then we retransmit. So send packet three. And then um, essentially from that point onwards, 
um, we also know that we have these other guys there. So we send him. And then we put that information in queue with 4, 5, 6. So we, we actually put it back into the correct order and continue from there. But the difference is this guy here. Whereas with go back in, we, we discard um, with selective repeat, um, sorry, uh, uh, selective repeat ARQ, we actually save. And then we say, oh, you're missing information there? OK, we're going to retransmit and insert it so now you have everything sequenced properly. All right? So, so, that's, so that, that's how selective repeat ARQ works, all right? All right. Oh, come on. All right. So, um, so in this case, what happens is the sender can have up to n unact packets in the pipeline. So we first of all define how many packets we can send before we actually need to act them, right? And then the receiver sends individual acts for each one. And the sender also maintains the timer for each unact packet. So I send it out, and it's like, do 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 time's running out. We better, we better actually get um, some sort of notification if it made it or not. Otherwise, if the timer expires, we retransmit only that unact packet. So that's the beauty of it. So what ends up happening is we, we, uh, we, we only retransmit the one missing guy. So the receiver, he acknowledges all the correctly received packets and buffers the rest. And then there's a timer for every unact packet. So now what happens is the sender, he only transmits the packets where there's no uh, act receive. And so what ends up happening, just like in the diagram we have here, we actually go, actually, yes. So what happens is, at some point, we're going to realize that we're missing something. In this case, this guy here, like th th that packet 3. And then when there's a timeout for packet 3, we retransmit that packet 3 to the, to the tran uh, receiver. And then what happens, so we call this a sliding window. That's another way of describing it. Where what we end up getting is that we have, you, I'm going to use gray. We have this sort of window that's going along, and it's sending all this data across to the receiver. And then some might not make it. So it's a temporal window. So it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And in this case, so n, our q n is equal to 6 here. So this is the number of unact packets that at any time I'm putting out there over the channel, right? And, and, and so, so th and the other example we looked at, I believe it was 4. OK. So at the end of the day, what we've got is essentially we have the packet n in the sliding window, and, and it's unact. And what ends up happening is um, we just the, the receiver, all it's going to do is it's going to sort of acknowledge everything it did receive. And it's up to the, re the transmitter when we send the ax, if it's missing one corresponding to that packet, it's going to retransmit. And otherwise, everything is stored in it. All right. So that, that concludes uh, lecture 24. OK. So any, any questions about, about